When I was studying for my CCIE, like a lot of other network engineers, I had to purchase or loan networking equipment. A lot of network engineers have spent thousands of dollars buying network equipment or renting network equipment for their studies. That used to be the only way to do it. But these days things have changed. This Gartner report from July 2017 talks about how the market is changing towards the use of APIs and the shift towards software. Software is eating the world. These days, it's becoming more and more important to learn about software and technologies such as Network Function Virtualization, or NFV. The case for buying physical hardware is becoming less and less convincing. One of the good things, however, is that hardware for labs is becoming cheaper and cheaper. Here's an example from eBay.com. A Cisco 3750 switch can be purchased for $34. Here's an example of a 1841 router that you can purchase for $50. It's amazing how the prices of networking equipment such as 1841 routers is getting less and less. There are many options available with regards to physical lab equipment, but let's first talk about why you would bother buying physical lab equipment. So here's one reason why you may want to use physical equipment. If you're new to networking, so as an example, you're studying for your CCNA, and you need to actually learn how networking works. There's no better way for learning how a cable is plugged in or how physical interfaces work than actually physically doing it and encountering all the problems that you encounter when building physical networks. A 3750 switch is a layer three switch, but a Cisco 2950 is a layer two switch that you could use in your home network. These are really cheap, but personally I would try and buy a 3750 if you can. So if you're studying for your CCNA and you want to see how networks are actually built, buy switches such as a 2950 or a 3550 or a 3750. It's really unbelievable how cheap 3750 switches are today. The switch again is $34 and provides many, many features. So if you can buy 3750s and 2950s, and for routers, look at buying 1800 series routers such as an 1841 router, but be aware that when you buy routers, you also need to buy the physical interfaces. So you'll need to buy WIC cards such as WIC1Ts. You'll have to buy serial interfaces. So you'll have to look at buying physical smart serial interfaces or the older DB60 serial cables. Be careful, this interface is a V35. So you've got a male connector here and you'll need to buy a female connector or get back-to-back -back DCE DTE cables such as this one. So in many ways, buying physical equipment can be more expensive, but does allow you to work with physical interfaces, physical cables, physical devices. It allows you to learn about all the problems that you encounter when building actual networks. I've heard too many stories of new network engineers that go to customer sites or apply for a job and don't actually know how to physically cable up network devices or know which ports go into which devices because they've never physically seen them. They've only used simulators. Don't be that person. Make sure that you've actually cabled up and touched physical networking equipment. As an example, convert your home network to a Cisco network. Add a Cisco router to your network. As an example, have it in front of your ADSL or cable router. Configure access lists and firewalls on your Cisco router. Configure VLANs on switches. So as an example, put some devices at home in one VLAN, other devices in other VLANs. In the past, it was very expensive to buy PCs, but that's no longer true. Buy a Raspberry Pi Zero 
or a Raspberry Pi 3 and connect it to your network. So these days it's very cheap to buy network devices as well as buy PCs. And you don't need to necessarily buy a Raspberry Pi. You could simply look online for old PCs and add them to your network. It doesn't matter if these PCs are powerful or not. They could simply run Windows 7 or Linux and you could add them to your network. So it's very easy these days to either buy secondhand PCs or devices such as the Raspberry Pi and add them to your network. One of the best ways to get started is to buy some network devices. Buy one router, buy one switch, add your laptop and perhaps another PC to your topology and try things. But moving forward, have a look at GNS3, Packet Tracer, or Cisco Viral, because once you've understood how physical interfaces work, it's much more productive to use virtual network devices such as GNS3. Another reason why you'd want to use physical equipment is that a vendor doesn't have a virtualized platform of a device. As an example, at the time of this recording, HPE don't virtualize their Aruba switches. The only way to practice with Aruba switches is to have a physical Procurve or Provision or Aruba switch, depending on which name you want to use. Another reason to use physical equipment is to test throughput. Virtual devices don't have the ASICs to give you a realistic idea of the throughput of a network device. It's a virtualized device running on your PC or laptop. It's great for learning, but doesn't necessarily allow for high throughput. Some devices are limited to a low throughput. In other words, you can't stress test a network using a virtual environment. It's not necessarily gonna give you the same performance or same results as a physical network device would. So those are some reasons to continue using physical equipment. Another reason may be that you're struggling to set up a virtualized environment using GNS3 or Viral. You may not have access to the network images or you may not wanna pay the subscription fee to get access to network images. But at work, you may have some equipment lying around that you can use to build a physical lab. So there are still good reasons to using physical equipment, but in a lot of cases, it's a lot simpler and a lot easier to use virtual devices. You can quickly spin up networks and tear them down in virtual environments and spend your time learning rather than spending your time cabling hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.